Hey everybody, what is going on? NGS back again for another collaboration video. I've got here with me the good old Dante Wee60. How you doing today, man? I am doing pretty good. How about you? Yeah, you know, same old, same old, same shiz, different day. Yeah, pretty much. What are we going to talk about today, Chris? Oh, well, what are we going to talk about today? I think we're going to talk about something that we kind of, I guess, hinted at in the Kingdom Hearts video when it came to platforms for Kingdom Hearts 3, and that was why it was not appearing on Nintendo's new home console, the Wii U. <gasps> <gasps> yeah, so basically, we, we I, I felt like doing this video as sort of a state of Nintendo update, sort of just understanding really the position Nintendo's in, I guess judging them from a longtime fan's perspective, but I also wanted to not only do that, but get another opinion, another perspective, and that's why I asked in my good friend Dante Wee60. And so you know a little bit about me, I have always been primarily a Nintendo gamer. I've always, when it started with the NES, had the SNES, N64, then my brother got a PS2, I got a GameCube, and you know, that in this past gen, I was, I had the Wii first, and then I got the other systems, but I'm always primarily Nintendo, but my opinions might not reflect that. Just because you buy the system doesn't mean you're a corporate slave. Is that mm -hmm. what you're trying to say? Yeah, actually, because... It, <sighs> Since freaking N64, I've been getting frustrated with them and some of the choices that they make. But I'm sure we all know about that. But we're going to get the video started. I'm not even going to get into that right now. Not yet. A little yet. teaser of what's to come, I assume. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so anyway, this should be no shocker to anybody about what's been going on with Nintendo as of late. I don't really need to remind anybody of their situation surrounding the Wii U and this entire year. And what's been going on with them, the battle between Nintendo versus developers and publishers and all that stuff. Because really, you could talk about this for hours, and there are certain things that are still unclear to us when it comes to certain things developers and publishers have said about the system that are true, that aren't true. Uh, like, for example, there's this whole war going on with EA and Nintendo, and everybody has just been speculating that the reason why EA is not developing games for Nintendo is because they want to put Origin on the system, yet there's been no confirmation of that whatsoever. Speculation. Honestly, a lot of the stuff of this generation and a lot of the Wii U is doomed stuff comes from speculation, which is quite annoying. Yes, there's a lot of speculation surrounding the system, both good and bad, the Wii U is doomed. But I think pretty much one thing that we can basically say this without a shadow of a doubt, the Wii U is not doomed. No, I really don't think it is at all. And people who say that, I mean, look at the 3DS. 3DS was doomed, wasn't it? People said that, said that Nintendo should just stop and leave the handheld market to the phones and stuff. Which, mm -hmm. mind you, if you're a real gamer, eh, the cell phone games only get you so far. Personally speaking, I, I do like some of the things that are available on the Android and iOS platform, but I seem to be spending the majority of my time not on these core games that people are like really hyping up on the smartphones, but more on the things that were ported over from like the DS and the uh, exactly and, uh, yeah like the Ace Attorney trilogy and you know Square Enix has a lot of their ports on there and such. So I mean, mobile games there's a place for them, and I I do love some of the stuff that they've made on there. There's a lot of great games to play for a couple minutes out of a time. But the thing is, I just don't see how you could have a handheld market without Nintendo being in there. It's like, I never understood why people say that Nintendo is doomed because if you look at the 3DS, considering nowadays where they're pretty much giving out smartphones for free, yet this thing is still selling, you know? I mean, my thing is, yes, you can, there is a market out there for the Angry Birds and the Plants vs. Zombies and, God forbid, Candy Crush. No. Oh. Good lord, I'm staying away from that, as far away from that as I can. I was a victim for a while, but I'm gone. I'm, I'm done with that. You're now. rehabilitated? I'm, I'm good. I, I was never addicted, but I did play for a while, and it kind of pissed me off a little bit. But I'm good. <laughs> it's been deleted. But anyways, um, <laughs> there's definitely a market out there for those little... 
I call those games, they're, they're, they don't take any kind of brain power. It's just you, you want to waste some time, you pop that in, you play some Angry Birds or some Plants vs. Zombies, you have fun for like five, ten minutes, and then you're done. But there's other things. Like if, if I'm on a flight for two hours, I won't be entertained by Plants vs. Zombies for that long. It, it, it's just there, there's not enough depth for me when it comes to that kind of stuff. So that's when I'll pop in. When I Actually, when I went to um, Orlando, on my way home, it was about a two-hour flight, and I played freaking Fire Emblem, and it's freaking amazing. You know, you, you can get – it, it takes your time, and it actually takes some brain power, where the other one's just kind of mindlessly flicking stuff or tapping stuff. It's good for standing in line and wasting time, but you, you can't really get immersed into it as much. And I guess me being a gamer since I was four, I need deeper games than just a little crap. Mm -hmm. I see what you mean. I definitely think that like these, of course, these games have existed on every platform, but I think yeah. the best the best place for them actually, I think, would transition over to the smartphone market where they can make a lot of money, you know? Instead of just, like, you know those type of games you see on 3DS that are 40 bucks, but it's just, like, literally the same thing over and over and over and over again. You're like, why is this on here, you know? Angry Birds, they put it on there. Well, we know the reasons why they put it on 3DS, PS3, 360, Wii, and now the Wii U. We, I, 40 bucks, I, I don't know why. I just, uh, if you bought that, oh my god. Yeah. Hopefully none of those people are watching this video. And if you are watching this video, too bad. You. <laughs> shame on you, too bad, all in there. So outside of the uh, mobile side of things, speaking specifically on the 3DS, I actually do have to disagree to some extent, Jamal, when it comes to people who are saying the 3DS is doomed and it's going to be outsold by... Um, be outsold by the smartphone market. I, I disagree simply because of Nintendo's track record with handhelds. I think Nintendo has had a lot more success. I think they've probably profited the most off of the handheld division ever since they've started it. And, you know, I never thought, I never to this day thought they really replicated the success of, you know, the NES um, yeah. with, with any of their consoles, not the N64, not the GameCube, not the Wii. And I don't even know if that's going to be the case for Wii U. I think their handheld field, you know, as long as they have Pokemon and as long as they have yeah. a Mario Skyd scroll or something, the Nintendo system is going to sell regardless to any gamer out there, no matter what part of the world you're in. So to that respect, I, I never really thought the 3DS was doomed to that extent because like when you looked at the amount of third-party support for 3DS when they first announced it, as opposed to Wii U, 3DS clearly had a lot of stuff. It just needed to take an extra year because 20, I believe it was 2012 was like the year for 3DS when it came to a lot of titles. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think it was doomed. I'm talking about everybody else. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that. I mean, I'm just saying, like, from that respect, when it came to people. But um, yeah. I think what just really killed the 3DS is that uh, Nintendo was expecting the fact that 3D was, you know, the big thing in the market. Yeah. They were expecting, like, that this would push them to, like, at least the end of the year. But the thing was, we really, like, people want to talk about, like, the launch of the Wii U, which was a big drought it was a big drought it's like the 3ds had almost nothing to play for it i got it launch day and i had street fighter because that was the best thing to get at launch you didn't want to play steel diver no and i didn't want to play nintendogs and i didn't want to play pilot wings what is nintendogs plus cats <laughs> i got it on clearance and i played it twice and now my dog's probably my dog probably hates me your dog probably died <laughs> but uh, I mean it was fun Street Fighter it, it really is a great game on the 3DS it showed the power of the 3DS and everything and it was really cool it utilized Street Pass and everything And but how long can you play that until you get bored not long I, I remember I bought the game um, with my 3DS and then I played it for a couple matches and I believe my brother had more play time on it than I did because it's it's just it's great and all but again it's a port of a game it's a very well done port from what I've yeah. from what I've played very well done but it's very just well done, yeah it's just like you can't have a port to be the one thing and there was never I didn't buy another 3ds game I believe it wasn't even until 
June when um, Ocarina of Time 3D came out. I didn't even know yeah. that. My, my brother literally just came home one day from GameStop. And I'm like, hey, what'd you guys like? Oh, I got Zelda 3S. I'm like, that came out already? He's like, yeah. I'm like, shit. I believe, yeah, that was the second game I got. I might have gotten something else. Maybe Tetris. Did Tetris come out before then? Do why do people buy Tetris? Like, for, I, I, like I, 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 I have don't. Tetris on my old phones, and that's it. Like, I, what? I got it because we're. In, I have a lot of friends who play as well, so we we play it. Okay, all right. But, anyway. yeah. but so, anyways, <laughs> like we were saying, there just it was just this huge drought, and. For me being a day one adapter, and then they announced the price drop and stuff, like, oh, slap to the face. Oh, but you're a ambassador, and you get all these extra games for free. Yeah, the games <laughs> that I never play. Okay. That, 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 oh my lord. That right there, I don't care what Nintendo was trying to do, given the ambassador program for people, they just literally slashed off almost $100 for the system. No amount of old games are going to make up for that. No, that was such a freaking slap to the face. I was, I mean, yeah, I was happy for the games, but at the same time, I'm like, wow. I was happy because I could actually play something on the system. <laughs> yeah. It's like, come on, guys. You, are you seriously doing this to me right now? But I'm an ambassador, and I still have my ambassador certificate of a 3DS. <laughs> You're special, though, man. Yeah. Mm, stupid. But, yeah, I mean, it was it was good, and it, it definitely gave the 3DS that momentum that it needed to start flying off the shelves. And then Mario 3D Land and Mario Kart came out, and it was a done deal after that. Heck yeah. I think it was never really a problem about gaining third-party support when it came to 3DS. It was just a matter of waiting. However, with the Wii U, there's, there lies the problem. Those are both of the issue. SNES, I honestly, they had a lot of success with that. And when they moved to the 64, that's when things started getting rocky because they wanted to stick with the uh, cartridges. Then everybody else was like, no, we're going to move to CDs and that's when they lost a lot of their support, and they never really mended those um, relationships until end of GameCube, getting into the Wii, but they still were never really back to where they used to be. That's the thing, though, that I, I remember hearing a report, Now I do not recall much of this since, frankly, the game it pertains to, I do not care, but apparently Squaresoft at the time, um, they wanted to create Final Fantasy VII for the N64. Uh huh. Yeah. And oh my God! Imagine if Nintendo got that game. Honestly, the PS Sony, the PS One wouldn't have existed. Yeah. It honestly, it would not. The Sony brand, if not for Final Fantasy VII, even though I do not like that game at all, it's a decent Final Fantasy game, sure, but it's just so overrated in comparison to the other entries. If it had not been for that game, it would have never kicked off this RPG craze, which put the PS One on the map outside Japan, put the PS2 on the map, and it's it's just it's it's just insane how it all could have been if Nintendo had not kept with cartridges. Yeah, and if they hadn't have messed up their partnership with some well, Sony kind of did some shady stuff too. Yeah, they did. So, yeah, that, that was kind of a mutual shade between the two. And now they hate each other. So we spent all this time pretty much talking about the 3DS and why does that pertain to the Wii U? Um, because people were saying the exact same things. That's what you're asking yourself, right? Well, yes and no, that can apply. But to some extent, it can't because where the 3DS was able to command support considering how big handhelds are in Japan, it's not the same for the Wii U. The third-party situation for Nintendo, like we said, hasn't really been too great. I mean... Yeah, they had some exclusive titles and collaborations here and there on the Wii and the GameCube, but overall, these third parties aren't really flocking to Nintendo to make video games. And honestly, I feel like a lot of these third parties, you hear so much from the news sites saying that, oh, this engine cannot be run on the Wii U, and it, it just isn't capable of it, and blah, blah, blah. When I feel that these are lies a lot of the time, because most of these engines, they have said that they are scalable. 
and the Wii U is it it it's not as powerful as the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox uh, One. We know this, but it is definitely more powerful than a PS3. And it can do some really great things. We haven't seen it yet because Nintendo hasn't put out their own stuff yet. But <laughs> um, we, we haven't seen the full potential of the Wii U yet. It, it's still something new to even Nintendo. They haven't done this HD thing. But... I think the reason that a lot of these developers are saying that their engines will not run on the Wii U is because they don't have the support. They don't have the numbers of people who have Wii U to justify them even trying to make it run on the Wii U. They don't want to spend the time and the resources if they know they're not going to get the return. Mm -hmm. So it's like, why would we do that? It's easy to make it at this level for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One and just port it between the two as opposed to having to actually get in there, learn how to do this for the Wii U, add some extra stuff for the gamepad. You know, it, I just, I really think it, it, it comes down to a lack of effort because they don't think they're going to get a return. And I, I can't really blame them because why would you go and do this huge risk at something that you don't know if you're going to get the money back. And the track record for Nintendo products is everyone only buys the first party stuff. So why am I going to spend all my time and resources with making a risk on Nintendo? I, I, it's not justifiable. It's really not. You can get mad at me all you want to. But it's really not justifiable in, in how the market is right now. If you were in their shoes, would you do it, viewer? Just, just ask yourself that. And to be honest, yeah, I, I, I do 100% agree on, on that account. And it does leave you with this vicious cycle where developers aren't going to make games for Wii U because there's no install base. And there's no install base because developers aren't going to be making games for Wii U. So, yes, that is one of the issues and when a developer comes out and says their games can't run on the system, with the exception of probably the guys who are doing Metro Last Light, with the exception of them, I think that any of these games could run on Wii U because these games are able to run on PS3 and 360 just exactly. fine. Like, not exactly. just fine when it comes to standards like, oh yeah, it's 25 frames, screen tearing, sure. But if it can run on older hardware, then... Why would they put it on there? Because Sony and Microsoft Systems command support. It doesn't matter what happens to the game. It will sell units on there. The thing with Nintendo is that it's... it's it's. I'm not going to say that developers like to screw Nintendo royally. Like everyone's saying that everyone's out for themselves and they're not for Nintendo. I don't really think that's the case. I mean, to some extent, I think... They are. They have been lazy when it comes to their ports. For example, uh, Mass Effect Three. I I do not know why, and we're we're still wondering. I remember I was um, I was I was talking to Jamal shortly after uh, Nintendo's E3 conference. It wasn't shortly after. It was like a, a couple of weeks later, and we were just talking about Wii U when we thought about it. You know, I was still on the fence. Jamal had pre-ordered it, and we were just wondering to ourselves. We were looking down the list of games. We're like they're still bringing Mass Effect 3 for Wii U? Like, where is the first two games? Like, yeah, why? I was, I was always joking, like, I'm going to get it. This is, the, this is the, uh, the best version of it right here. I'm going to get it. <laughs> it's That'd just like, so you're bringing over the finale of a trilogy that started six years ago, and it's like, I don't care how much effort you put into digital motion comics, you're not, that does not substitute for two 20 to 30 hour experiences. Sure it does. You can still make all the big choices. They just don't mean anything to you. <laughs> you just you don't get attached to these characters. You, you just don't. Like the characters you played with since 2007. You, know? you just don't. You just don't. Oh, God. But yes, I think to some extent the developers have been releasing lazy ports such as Mass Effect 3. Um, Sniper Elite V2 I heard was uh -huh. very stripped. Yeah, they took stuff out of it. I, I don't think they even had an online mode in there. Like the other versions did. That's 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 very disappointing. And not only that, but there were other games here and there. Um, Need for Speed Most Wanted is actually the most. That game is good. 
Yeah. But on there, that game is really, they did a really good job with it. It's it's beautiful. It, it's very optimized for the system. And even the online stuff works really well, as well as it can on the Wii U. But yeah. we'll That's get well. it later. <laughs> yeah, but the thing was that when it comes to third-party games, the games don't sell. And obviously, it comes down to a number of factors. None of, like the most important being that um, why are you bringing these games out on the Wii U? They're late. They cost more than the PS3 and 360 counterparts, which have depreciated in cost. And even some of them didn't even have the associated DLC, which was one of the problems I was hearing from Need for Speed Most Wanted. And Call of Duty. Mm, yeah, they still didn't get the DLC for Black Ops 2? Not that I've heard of. I don't think they have it. I mean, I, I have it on the Xbox, so I don't know. But, eh, yeah. No, you'll see from what I know. That's uh, yeah. So yes, to some extent, third parties are at fault when it comes to gimping versions. Uh, but um, that's really the extent of where you can hold them when it comes to games. You know, because it it, it definitely does come down to Nintendo in some respects. Because I think there should have been some form of like more collaborations brewing between them. Mm-hmm. instead of what we're seeing now. I mean, they're doing a lot more of them now, which is great. Uh, but I think like if you're going to bring over these big multi-platform games that everybody's talking about, you may want to try to influence people to get it on the Nintendo system. And by that, I mean do quality control. Make sure like you have like a lock on these developers to say that, yeah, you're getting these features, they were in this version, but you're getting a little bit more in this one instead of just advertising that, oh, you can play on the gamepad because it's it's amazing. And, you know, one thing as well, Nintendo can't demand anything as far as features until they add features to their freaking system. <laughs> yeah, and that, I think, is a pretty good segue of where we want to talk to you now when it comes to Wii U. The Wii U in a lot of respects, is still a pretty bare bones system. It really is. I mean, I, I've had it since day one. And since day one, I've been a little disappointed having a PS3 and a 360 as well. It's been kind of like, why do you, why you no do right? It's why, kinda, you, why you no do things? Why, why you no online? What <laughs> is this? It's like, Okay, this is just so ass backwards to me. Um, In order to get a friend invite or whatever, okay, you know, on the Wii U, when they announced that, okay, there's no more friend codes at all, you have a account name, and that's awesome. Like, yay, I actually can just be myself and tell my friend what my name is, and they can go into the friends section and add me in there, and I'll get an invite. Eh, wrong. Wrong. If you go to the friend section of the Wii U and you add someone as a friend right there, it's just like the friend codes. And the other person has to add your name. It Like, if Chris were to add me on the Wii U, I would not get a notification if he did it through the friend section. I don't get a notification of this. I would have to get his information and add him as well. If you want to do a friend invite to where you actually get a notification, you have to go through the Meverse and search for the person and send a request that way. Then you'll get a notification and you'll be able to add them without having to both collaborate and make sure you both add each other's screen name. It's like, guys, what, what is, what is, why? It is definitely, and to correct you, man, when you say it's ass backwards, I th- I think it's bass backwards, man. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There we that go. works too. Another thing, another question I had when I got my Wii U. I'm actually raising my hand right now. Another question I had. Um, you know, the Wii U, it, it has this little home button, and on the home button on the game pad, it has this little blue LED light because Nintendo likes blue LED lights for notifications. They like they like those. Um, that's all fine and good, but I don't see that when I'm playing the game. So if I get a message from, from someone, uh, we'll touch on messages in a little bit as well. Oh if, God. <laughs> if I get a message from somebody, I don't see anything on the screen that lets me know, Hey, so-and-so sent you a message. 
Oh, like the way they notify you is that little blue light flashing on your game pad. But where are you looking most of the time when you're playing the game? You're looking at the TV. Even if you're looking at the game pad, you're not looking down. You're looking at the screen. So it, it's easy to miss that little flash on the game pad. And then once you do that, you have to – you. If if I do get a message from someone, I cannot just press the button, read the message, and go right back to my game. I have to press the button, and it shows the Meverse thing flashing, and then you go to the Meverse, let that load up, and then you click on the message in the Meverse, and then you can see your message. It's still ridiculous that you have to open another app in order to read a message. What? And then back to your game. Like I don't I don't want to go to Meverse. If somebody sends me a message, it should pop up on my screen. I press the home button, look at the message, press the home button and get right back to going what I'm doing. Doing what I'm doing. It's I just I don't understand why they don't have some kind of an online system that is just it it should just be synchronized throughout. The message system should not be a separate app. It should be part of the infrastructure of the freaking system itself just am i crazy is is that too much to ask i i honestly when it comes to nintendo i think so like one of my major complaints that i had like honestly when it came to uh the the launch of the wii u I, like pretty much going up towards like when i heard about the, it was the second one i learned about the price for wii u that i sort of thought to myself okay i don't want to get the system it's not because of how much it costs like because i think for the price it is, like $299 for that system, I think it's fine. Okay, I, I don't have a problem with it. I don't like it. I don't hate it. My main problem was, and I spoke to this about Jamal like literally a week before, I'm just like, dude, I have a feeling that we're going to be doing a lot of waiting to get features on this system. Yep. Just and like a... <laughs> it's it, it's like my worst fear come to life. It's it's like these, feature, these features were standard on Xbox 360 in 2005. You just reminded me about something. Keep oh, going. Oh, God. <laughs> this is not right. Okay, but yeah, these features were standard on Xbox 360. They're standard now on PS3. Why Why? Why aren't they standard on Nintendo? I don't want to hear people saying that, well, it took the PS3 a while to get where it is today. I'm like, that does not matter. It, we're not comparing people. We're speaking specifically on how Nintendo released a system with online capabilities and functions that they are touting as one of the most immersive social experiences in all of gaming, and yet you cannot send your friend a proper game invite. There it is. There's a segue. Yes. Oh god. That's what I want to talk about. That one right there. Good job. <laughs> uh, let's talk about game invites here, people. Let's talk about the game invites on the Wii U. By the way, I like my Wii U. It's a good system, but they just need to get their stuff together. Anyway, half, half an hour later, you say this. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the system. Uh, but, oh my gosh. Okay, so I have Tekken Tag, and I have um, Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed. I have both of those games. And you can play those online with your friends. It's awesome, okay? And um, when you want to play with one of your friends... You see they're online, you, it'd be great if you could just send them a message and say, hey, let's play online. Uh, we already talked about how the messages work. But, okay, let's just say that you and your friend are ready to play. Both of you know that you're going to play. So you turn on Tekken, and you're like, where's the invite option? It does not exist. You turn on Sonic. Where's the invite option? It does not exist. What they have to do is you set up a friends match, and then your friend has to search for a friends match, and then they're like, oh, he has a friends match open. I'll join that friends match. What? In this 2013? I, I, I just... Why is it so clunky? <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> Why were you so clunky? <laughs> I just, I, I don't understand it. We were searching for like 20 minutes for some kind of a invite option. I was searching on the internet and everything. I was like, no, there's no invite friends option. There's just not. You can search for when friends have an open lobby, but you, there, you, you cannot invite anyone. The only game that does it the right way is Monster Hunter. 
And that's their own thing. They don't use Nintendo stuff. On Monster Hunter, if you have a friend who's online, you can send them a message in game. And oh, guess what? In game, there's an on screen notification. <gasps> what? <laughs> there's an on screen notification, and they can check the message. And then if there's room inside the room that they're in, you can jump right in. But the on screen notification for a message definitely makes up for the fact that there's not a proper invite function on Monster Hunter Try. Because if you can send a message to your friend like, hey, what are you doing? Can I join your game? They could say yes. You could just jump right in. It's just, I, I don't understand why this system has come out after the 360 and the PlayStation 3. And like you said about them saying how, oh, we got our online system and everything. But then it just... It's so lonely. You're still so lonely on the Wii U. <laughs> You're still so lonely. <laughs> but there's, there's, really, there's Vivers you can draw. There's still no point in adding friends to the Wii U. You can see what your friends are playing, but good luck at getting the game started. It, you, can, you can join a game better on the 3DS than you can on a, the freaking home console right now. So the gist that I'm more or less trying to get across here from us speaking on this is that it's it's not necessarily the fact that there are no games for the system that is really scaring developers off. That's one of the main factors, you know, because if this thing had a huge install base, if it was selling, then you would see all the third parties as it did with the Wii. You saw practically almost every third party on the Wii making a game in some way, shape or form, albeit a port or an original title. Games. Yeah, that was amazing. Leave it alone. <laughs> Carnival games for Wii Man, and then they sold out by putting it on the Connect. So I hate them now. <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's it's it does definitely come down to the fact that there is no install base. But it also comes down to the fact that the online infrastructure is so gimped and broken and behind the competition that there's nothing appealing. Like this was supposed to be Nintendo's change. Like, this is the one thing why everyone says, why are you guys so harsh on Nintendo more than Sony and Microsoft? Why are you saying that they need to have all this stuff now? Why are we saying they need to have all this stuff now? Because Nintendo made the decision in 2006 to launch a system that wasn't, I guess you could say, future-proof for at least five years. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you should at least try to make your system relevant for that amount of time. As everybody knows, the Wii U pretty much died in 2011 with Skyward Sword. Yep. Like, that was the last blockbuster Nintendo entry. Rest in peace, 2011, with the release of Skyward Sword. And I know people like to say, but in 2011, 2012, you had Xenoblade and Last Story. Those games were done a long time ago. We just got and a they localization. they dragged their feet to get it over here. And it, it wasn't until us complaining for over a year that we... It's it's like seriously, and then they didn't give us all three of them at the same time. Like eh, we'll just trickle them out to you guys. You get one of them in spring, one of them in late summer, and the other one next spring. I'm like, really, really? When the Wii is already out, yeah. yeah. When the Wii is already out, we're gonna give you a game for the Wii. Like th that's the thing I just don't understand. It's like pretty much interest for the Wii. Like their E3 2010 conference, I think, was the perfect send off for the system. Even though we shouldn't have had a send off for a system with E3 conference when the system was only out for less than four years at the time. <laughs> so, I mean, you had so many great games come out in 2010 that, in my opinion, 2010 was the year for the Wii. Um, but after that, it was just so not there at it all. It was just barren, a wasteland. Yeah, man, it was the struggle, the thirst. And it's it's just like, seriously, Nintendo's had all this time to craft the Wii U, and their online is so gimped, they're not really commanding any third-party support. And it's just, honestly, they, they have money in the bank. They should be able to pay off big-time developers. They should be able to pay off for at least partnerships or exclusive timing. Like, Bayonetta 2, I, I, I just, I know people are trying to say that this game is going to save the Wii U. No, it's not. No. No, it is not. It is not going to save the Wii U. Bayonetta is not going to save third parties on Wii U. Bayonetta is a great game. I'm playing it right now. Jamal here has played it. It's Mom. fun. Shut up. <laughs> it's fun, but that is not a big third party game. Like, yeah, sure, for gamers it's big, but I don't see that game selling more than like 
a million or two and that's stretching it you know yeah i mean when it when it comes i'm happy you said something about it selling stuff as well because when it comes down to it um you really if you have a nintendo system you have to support the third party games you have to Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, this cycle is just going to keep. It's just going to continue on a third party side. I mean, Nintendo they need to get their shit together. Yeah, That's like true. first party wise, they 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 should. They honestly shouldn't have squandered like their first year. And I know people say, "Well, HD development, they should have been prepared for this long ago." Like, what the heck? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, we we never knew how to do HD development until now. Yeah, you're developing an HD game for the first time in 2013. That that that's wow. Yeah, but like I was saying, like um, the Need for Speed game, I could have gotten it on a 360. You could have gotten it on a PS3, but I got it on the Wii U because I wanted to support it on there. I want the developers to see if there are people who buy games like that on that console. Same thing with Batman. I could have gotten it on other systems for cheaper. I knew this, but I want them to know that there are people who buy their games and Watch Dogs. I am going to get a PlayStation 4. I know that that is going to be a better experience on a PlayStation 4, most likely, unless they do some great stuff, which honestly, they could do some really good stuff with the gamepad. Watch Dogs, that could be awesome, but we'll see what happens. But I'm going to get it for the Wii U because I want developers to understand that we're out there, but one person isn't going to do it. Well... I, I, I guess I can understand what you're saying, that people need to support the third parties. But then it does come down to, honestly, if you're a person who's never owned a system other than the Wii, then, yeah, this stuff's going to look great. But me owning every console that's out, I just, I can't see myself justifying a gimped version, albeit Need for Speed Want- was Most Wanted was great. I mean, I'm just saying to myself, like, if it's on the competition and it's done better, it's just... Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. It's That's like, why, I understand as, why people aren't buying the third-party games. However, uh, because yes, some of them are gimped, but the ones that aren't gimped, there should really be like no excuse from people. Yeah, and with Watch Dogs, as it gets closer to the launch of the game, and I see the features that are between the two um, the two versions, you know, I'll, I'll make my decision. But right now, I plan on getting on the Wii U just to support the, so the developers on that system. Yeah. And uh, considering Ubisoft, they said like Watch Dogs, Rayman, and Splinter Cell are like their last round of Wii U games for the time being. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it definitely does come down to, I guess, judging it based on a situation by situation basis. But honestly, I I don't think that this is the end of the Wii U, as people will say. <laughs> Not at all. As negative as especially I've been this whole time. I'm sorry. I've had the console since day one and I'm really frustrated but uh, I still don't I, I don't think it's dead at all. I just really being a Nintendo fan forever and seeing their downfalls, I'm tired of it and I really want them to start pulling their weight and doing better. Like one other feature list Thing that I want to talk about is, um, as you all know, or know or may not know, Earthbound just came out for the Wii U, which is awesome. You know, it's a game I've wanted to play. I never had a chance to play it when I was a kid. So I downloaded it, and that's, that's cool. Right now, I'm not even at my house. I'm at my friend's house, and I have a 3DS as well. You would think that, you know, okay, it's a virtual console game. You can just transfer it between the Wii U and the 3DS. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Um, even if there's a game that's on the virtual console on the 3DS and the Wii U, you would have to buy that game twice. There is no way to link these two accounts and play these games from your 3DS to your Wii U. And that is so behind the times because the 3DS is very capable of doing this. Mm -hmm. But 
they just they haven't done it yet and i'm hoping that they maybe do a feature later on where you can do that because how awesome would it be to take your virtual console library with you wherever you go instead of having separate virtual consoles for the 3ds and the wii u which at the same time the wii's virtual console is big but instead you, you can play all the wii virtual console games on the wii u but you have to play it in Wii mode. So they're re-releasing some of these games like Mario World and Kirby and whatnot so that it has the Wii U stuff and you'd have to repurchase it. It's like, guys, why? Just, uh, I don't get it. If anything, man, I think for those who bought the system in the first year, they should get like some, like if you bought the, 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 the Deluxe Edition, I think like for a year, you should be able to upgrade your virtual console games to the Wii U editions of them. I, I think, honestly, that would be... Because I know a lot of people out there who bought the Wii. They didn't buy any games for the system. They bought the Wii just virtual to play console, virtual console. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, it, it's... They give you a discounted price, and it is cheap to upgrade the games. It, it is, but there, there's no reason for that. They're the same game. Oh, we're adding Miiverse, and you can off the TV play. <laughs> you're, Isn't you're, it not even off the TV play? It's like it's playing on both simultaneously, and you can't even close yeah, the thing? Pretty much, yeah. Wow. So I, I just... They really need to get that together. There should be an account system that, where it, that can link your 3DS and your Wii U together, and you can play those games. It, it, there's no reason... At all. The only... No, I, I can't even see that. I was going to say the only games that possibly wouldn't work on a 3DS would be the N64 games, but you could make it work. Mm -hmm. You could map the buttons to where they work. So there's there's really no excuse. Mm. Speaking of uh, account systems and account base such as that, that's one of the things I'm kind of hesitant on when it comes to purchasing things off of uh, the Nintendo eShop, uh, mainly the 3DS. I'm not familiar with how it extends onto the Wii U, but with the 3DS, it's the same? Yeah. Well, with the 3DS, it's like if you buy games on the system, and let's just say your system is broken or it gets stolen or what happens, that's it. That's done. There's no way for you to transfer your games. Now, like I said, I'm unfamiliar with this. Maybe if you call up a Nintendo representative, they'll help you get your account back if you explain it. But again... This should not be the case. If I lose my iPhone, if I lose my PS3, I'm still able to redown all of my older games onto a new system. It should not be this way for the Nintendo games. No matter, like, people say, oh, well, Nintendo systems aren't known to break much. And I'm like, really? And your point it, it's like yes yeah, so like if it doesn't break that's not the only way you could lose the system you know there's water damage there's obviously it's it getting stolen it just it's it just it all comes down to people making excuses for these companies which i just never really understood because nintendo should be going out of their way to please you especially considering how disappointing they've been you know this generation you know as much as i loved the games on the wii from Nintendo, it's you can definitely tell they are not as good as uh, they used to be. Honestly, they've been on decline since the N sixty four days. In terms of um, just in terms of a lot of things, you know. And see, um, when you said the thing about um, the account system, now if you have your club Nintendo account. Mm -hmm. It does automatically see whenever you buy a game or whatever, but from what I hear, it's still a hassle to get them to give you these games because, yes, they do see the games that you've bought, but this account is connected to your 3DS that you've registered or the Wii U that you've registered. So once that thing is gone, they have to transfer all of this account stuff over to your new console. And that I could see that being a huge issue for Nintendo. Because it's not it, it it's not as easy as if you just have an account that it's already tied to online and like, oh okay, you have that license. Just go ahead and download it again. You have that license on that system only. And it should be with your account, not to the 
physical system itself. That, yeah, that's the one thing I think they should do. They should have it so you have the account, it's your Club Nintendo account, and you could choose to register your system and your games. You don't just need to register the system and then the games come later, you know? Yeah, it, it's just they, they, need, they got some stuff to fix, man. And I, I, I really hope they do fix these things because that would make the system just so much better. It really would. Because, I mean, the 3DS, when it started, it was missing a lot of features. But now, I, I 3DS works really well. Mm-hmm. And the Wii U is already starting to get better with the load times and things of that nature. Because that load, those load times. <laughs> oh, God. It, it just seems to me that they took a lot of play-by-plays from Sony in 2006, you know? Yeah, it just seems to me in that case, but it, it 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 honestly comes down to like you saw that Sony was correcting the mistakes that they had with the PS3, with the PS4, with Nintendo and the Wii U. It, it just it doesn't seem like they're correcting any of the mistakes from the Wii. I mean, it, it, it honestly just seems like Nintendo was unprepared for all of this, which you know they shouldn't have been they should have been playing this thing from a while ago not just relying on this tablet off play feature they should have been working hard to get all these people out there because like i said interest in the wii died after 2010 you know skyward sword was the last big game that you had to get and that was in 2011 so they had all this time and they just from what i've been seeing they squandered it or they just don't want to reveal what they're going to be working on, which I'm sorry, Nintendo. I know you like to do things your own way. You like to distance yourself from the competition. No one is saying that you should have, you know, a PS4 Lite or an Xbox One clone. No one's saying that. What we are saying is that there are certain features that are standard, that have become standard in the industry that people are accustomed to, not only on gaming consoles, but on social media platforms, on tablets and smartphones and etc 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 that you need to have in there this is the basic stuff in 2013 and that's what really disappoints me overall in 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 that respect i just think it's it's inexcusable to have to go through that and you know mind you mind you all throughout i am still going to get a wii u next year because like i've been saying this for a good while now ever since they had that direct back in january that 2014 is going to be the year for Wii U to shine. You know, Wii U, in my opinion, has not released yet. Wii U is coming out in 2014. Yeah, man. But it's the year of the Ouija. <laughs> this is the funniest thing. When when Sony was, um, oh my God, Twitter, if you want to see some fun stuff, the best time to watch Twitter during the Super Bowl and during e3 it's the best time to be on twitter and just when sony started revealing all the stuff for the playstation 4 um at e3 like the fact that it you know doesn't uh require the online check-in and it supports use games kingdom hearts 3 and all that stuff somebody tweeted like literally in quotes like as something satori iwata would say but it's the year of luigi and i'm like what year luigi one game and a freaking reskinning on new super luigi zero okay Oh, yeah. He 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 jumps higher than Mario, and slides when he runs. <laughs> oh, Nintendo, Nintendo! They they just have a lot of catching up to do. They're always like three steps behind. <laughs> it's it's honestly, I think it's because they are observing the competition, but not to the extent they should be. Like when they got on uh, that uh, Jimmy Fallon's game week, and they're like. He's like, so what's new with new Super Mario World 3D or whatever it's called? The really innovative thing is the cat suit. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, cat suit? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, like for us gamers who are going to play the game, yeah, it's cool. But you don't go on there and say, there's a cat suit. Man, no more people are going to look at that. They'll be like, what? Because nobody knows what the Wii U still is. I bet there are people who saw the Wii U back in... Uh, I don't even know when they put it on the Jimmy Fallon show. It was 2011, 2012. But like, he's like, this is the Wii U. And they're like, so what is it? And he's trying to explain it. I'm like, yo, that's the thing. Nintendo, they are, were just so unprepared. They were so unprepared for an HD system. They were so unprepared for online. And they were so unprepared to market this thing. Like, there are still people who don't know what a Wii U is. That still happens with some of my friends. I'm like, should I bring my Wii U? What's a Wii U? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like, uh, and I, I, just, I just hate when people say, well, those guys are ignorant. No, they're not ignorant. Like the, the standard people, they shouldn't have to do research on the platforms. The, the companies should do a job at marketing the game because already it did not even have to matter what the online policies were for Xbox One. I knew people who knew about Xbox One day one. I knew people who knew about PlayStation 4. Wii U? What, what is that? Is that an add-on for the Wii or something? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like, I know they're trying to market the Wii brand and such, but it it's just, oh, it's like, I don't think that's the best brand to associate in general. You know, I mean, they're, they're trying to capitalize off the casuals, but casuals have moved on to tablets, man. And, and the Wii U gamepad is not a substitute for a tablet. Yeah. It's like Nintendo capitalized on the motion craze in 2006 because there was nothing really like it out there at the time. But them releasing a tablet controller in 2012 when tablets had been on the market for like two and a half years, three years prior to that point. Yeah. They just, oh man, Nintendo. It's like when you look at it, you're like, you want to like Nintendo because they have great parties, uh, great first party titles. But it comes down to them just being so out of touch with the with the console side of things. And yes, we know Wii U is going to improve on the feature side of things, but it's like, you shouldn't have to wait. And, and it's like, if the sales are any indication, like, yeah, people don't want to wait. Monster Hunter was like the last big title for Wii U. And that was back in March. And the next huge major title is Pikmin. What is that? That's a five-month gap? And that game should have been out. They said it was going to be in the launch window. Yeah. Yeah, it, like Miyamoto wanted to delay it, whatever. But still, it's like, come on now, that's a good from November. You had Zombie U and New Super Mario Brothers U. That's two games, okay? Now, we're not going to sit here and talk about whether you like them or not. Two games in November, then you had Monster Hunter, and then nothing. Yep. Well, we've pretty much said all we have to say in terms of our, our thoughts and feelings towards the system. Jamal, if you were in charge of Nintendo right now, if you had pretty much, you were controlling all the puppet strings towards yeah. the people over at Nintendo, Iwata, Miyamoto, um, Eiji Aonuma, and um, uh, Reggie fils what would you honestly do, like, starting now from this point and going into next year, what would you do to try to fix the Wii U? Okay. Um, it's probably pretty obvious after what I spent most of my time talking about. I would flesh out the features of the Wii U itself and make it more appeasing to the developer's side as well so it is not a gimped version of the other games that they're putting out especially the online stuff because that, that really needs to be worked out um, and then I would work on getting a game out that truly defines the system we don't have one of those yet the best one that really gave you a glimpse into what um, the Wii U is capable of was Zombie U. A lot of people shit on this game, but it's not a bad game at all. It's not great. <laughs> but it's not bad. I was about to say, I'm raising my eyebrow. You say this is... <laughs> no, no, no. Hear, hear me out. Hear me out. I, it's, it's a fun game. It had its issues in it. It definitely did. Like, only one melee weapon through the entire game. Never getting more powerful. Yeah, that was frustrating as heck. Left but, 4 Dead Superior, and that game's like three years older than it. <laughs> of course. But, I mean, it was a game that showed you the potential. It, it, it shows you the potential of the gamepad. Why do I have a gamepad? Oh, because it gets you more immersed in the game. It's not just using it for a map. It's not just a second screen that's playing the action. It actually has a real use. But Nintendo itself has not given you a reason to buy. It hasn't shown us why they added this gamepad. Don't you say anything about Nintendo Land. <laughs> because, yeah, okay, it, it does show some some potential for it. But that is, it doesn't show you exactly why. And that's what I was hoping for with the Mario game. You just knew that the 3D Mario was going to show you, oh, this is why I have a Wii U. No. No. Still still not yet. Uh, so, 
they, 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 that, that's what I'd do. I'd make sure we had something that showed off the true potential of our gamepad and our vision and fix the functions, the, the features, I mean. That's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. All right, that does sound pretty good. Personally speaking, for me, basically what Jamal said. Um, uh, also, I want to interject on the zombie viewpoint. I still think it looked better as Killer Freaks from Outer Space. <laughs> looked a lot better than Zombie You did. <laughs> it's not bad. You have to try it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, my brother has a Wii U and such. If I see it for like 15, then maybe I'll consider trading Fifth some stuff. Would be worth it. It. 15 bucks? Yeah, 15 is that, that's a good price for it. <laughs> okay, then. So. Basically, what I would do, first and foremost, if I was in control, I would, I know this is going to shock some people, but I would get rid of Iwata and Reggie as the main guys for Nintendo. Like, I would get rid of them as the people who are running the company. Now, that's not to say I'm kicking them from the company. I'm demoting them. I am, I, they can still do their things. Like, honestly, like, I love seeing Iwata on Nintendo Directs, however funny his English is. Um, directly to you. Directly to you. I love seeing Reggie. Like I, I love these guys. They got great personalities. They're humble, but they they it's like two systems in a row where we've had the same problem where they've been posting losses. And no, they're not going bankrupt, so stop saying that people. And no, we're not thinking they're going bankrupt. But they've had two years in a row. Two two years in a row of them posting losses with these two systems. And I'm just like, okay, something is going wrong. I mean like what is happening here? So I demote them. I promote someone else to the company that actually watches what is going on with the, the industry and knows what he's doing, but still has the Nintendo philosophy there. Because I think it's like, because we're moving into a different situation in the industry. It's, it's no longer just, yeah, we're going to rely on Nintendo stuff. But if Nintendo wants to get out there and get their party support and they want to make it like a, a competitor to PS4 and Xbox One when it comes to games that aren't nintendo then this philosophy is not going to stick it's not gonna it's not it's not it's not just gonna last it is i mean at the very best we're gonna get a great first party nintendo system with a couple of collaborations such as shin Megami cross fire emblem and sonic lost world but for all this hype that nintendo has generated towards the system that oh it's all about third parties and all that stuff eh. Bringing back the hardcore. Bringing back those people. So that's what I do. I demote Reggie and Iwata, and I bring in people who actually understand the regions and actually understand what's going on. And no, that does not mean we're going to get a lot of Western FPS games and a lot of bull crap. That does not mean that at all. So stop thinking that. So outside of that, in terms of like the industry side of things, I would definitely go out there and try to secure as many collaborations with very notable developers as I could. Um, I know Nintendo has a lot of money in the bank there. I, I think, honestly, when it comes to, they could probably outlast Sony and Microsoft combined when it comes to uh, going bankrupt. You know, I think Nintendo will go bankrupt last. But I would use that money to get collaborations with very big, notable Japanese companies. Uh, Square Enix, for example, I don't know what they do on there, but I think Square Enix could create an original title. I'd probably have uh, level 5, put something out on the Wii U, get a lot of Japanese support and try to make it a driving support, a driving force in Japan, even though Japan's geared towards handhelds, I still think that they can make a success because the PS3 sold a lot in Japan, so I think you can do the same for the Wii U, even though the 3DS is there. So I try to secure as many collaborations as possible to appease the Japanese guys and probably try to do the same with Western developers, maybe get some exclusive games going on there, and if not exclusive games, definitely focus on the third parties at least make it more enticing and appealing saying like hey you know we'll pay you this amount of money to get such and such on here you know i mean that's what you have to do people i mean yeah, yeah there's an extent you have to go when it comes to third parties you don't want to make games for the system but how did microsoft get into the gaming field when they came out they didn't have really anything going for them i mean they were just these guys who you know, made PCs, and then they got Halo on there, and then they got all these big exclusive titles that were on, like, that were previously on Sony and Nintendo systems on their system. It's all about spreading the money out and just and just making wise business decisions. And to be honest, Nintendo is making wise business decisions in the niche market. They're not making it in the grand scheme of things. 
So that's pretty much what I do. I'd focus on refining the current system, which would detail features, online overhaul, and of course the eShop. I would demote Iwata and Reggie, and I would mm. just focus on... I know it's just so funny to say that. It's just like, get your shit out of here. <laughs> I just focus on getting as many games to the system as possible. But yeah, peeps, this is pretty much our State of the Union address for Nintendo. Uh, Jamal, you got anything else you want to say to the lovely folks about uh, the future of Nintendo? Uh, 2014 would be great. They'll get their momentum rolling and everything will be fine. Just like with the 3DS, everybody will forget those dark times. And <laughs> oh, the dark eight months, the dark eight months. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, even though I have not been positive towards Nintendo this entire video, <laughs> uh, it, I, I still believe that they're going to be fine. Believe it or not. Hey, how could you not be positive when it's the year of Luigi? <sighs> the year of Luigi. Luigi. <laughs> All righty, well... Dante we 60 thank you for joining me in this collab video. His channel is down below in the description if y'all want to check him out. No, well, anytime, bro, if there's anything that we want to um, discuss, I'm here. All right, it sounds very good. And, of course, expect all of the uh, Nintendo Task Force to leave their comments appropriately. Oh, my. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I'm a GS signing out, and, like always, I will catch you guys later. Peace.